Hey, Newport Mesa Church and everybody tuning in, we are so grateful that you're tuning in this morning, welcoming us into your homes. We are all praying that eventually this will be over, but here we are in the middle of the COVID-19 situation, and uh, we're in a series called The New Normal. Uh, again, I don't know if there's lower thirds for this, but my name is Jordan, this is Eunice, Brittany, and Rick. We've got two staff and an elder. And today we are having a conversation. It's a part of the series called This New Normal. Uh, again, if you didn't realize this, we have taken that term, regardless of where it came from, and we're bringing a spiritual meaning to it. What is the new God normal that God is uh, instituting, teaching, growing, uh, producing in us during this very unique season? And, um, and so I'm just grateful to have Eunice, Brittany, and Rick. But before we actually jump in, uh, I wanted to just let you know that this Thursday, May 21st, we are going to be doing a, a kind of a bigger version of what you're going to see. So uh, May 21st, we're having a story night and we're asking the question, what is God teaching you during this season? And, and that's the question that we're going to answer this morning. And so as you're listening to Eunice and Brittany and Rick and myself, I want you to think about that question for yourself. What is God teaching you during this season? Again, before we get going, I did want to make one just little small cool announcement. Um, today we got word that Brittany, who is our youth director, has gotten her credentials. And so she is now officially Pastor Brittany. And we're super proud and excited. Uh, yeah. For her, <laughs> Pastor Brittany and Nick have just been doing a phenomenal job with our youth ministry and our student ministry, and we're just super proud of her. So grateful to have her on the panel today uh, and grateful to be able to call her Pastor Brittany. So excited about that Thanks. and for your contribution. Um, so Eunice, what is God teaching you? Yeah. This is such a crazy season, and you know, I know that um, that you're all about growth. But growth is hard. It, it is hard. And yeah, so uh, first of all, thank you for uh, the invite. And yeah, so I've, um, I've been sharing uh, with, with Pastor Jordan, I've been feeling restless mm -hmm. um, the last few weeks. And I feel, uh, you know, you might relate to it as well. Uh, this is just restlessness. Um, and I've been, um, you know, just praying about it and um you know in my prayers um i've been you know just asking god like god like i want i want to know you more i want to um experience you more in a way that i've never experienced you before um and what i was truly asking is i want to know what it means to be in your presence mm. and um and so uh, I've been praying in, in, in a couple, few weeks ago, I was praying and I, um, I started praying, thanking God, praising God. And then my usual, you know, the, the prayer requests, right, that come after. And um, I remember start, starting getting upset about my prayers. And I'm thinking, God, like, I'm tired. I'm tired of praying the same thing over and over and over again. Um, I just, I, I don't want to pray this. I, I just, I, I'm praying and I just feel this, this emptiness, this longing. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so anyhow, so I'm praying and I just stop praying, you know, and, uh, and then I go into scripture. So I start reading scripture and I believe it's not a coincidence that God, uh, put this scripture and it comes out of the gospel of Luke and I'll read it for you. Uh, Luke 11, uh, verse two to seven. And it says this, and this is where, uh, the disciples are asking Jesus, uh, to teach them how to pray. And so it says this, Jesus said, this is how you should pray. Father, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. Mm. Give us each day the food that we need. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation. And then he said this. Then teaching them more about prayer, he used a story. Suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight, wanting to borrow three loaves of bread. You say to him, friend, a friend of mine has just arrived for a visit and I have nothing for him to eat. 
And suppose he calls out from his bedroom, don't bother me. The door is locked for the night and my family and I are all in bed. I can't help you. But I tell you this. Though he won't do, though he won't do it for friendship's sake, if you keep knocking long enough, he will get up and give you whatever you need because of your shameless persistence. Mm. And did that say shameless persistence? Shameless mm. persistence. I love that. Wow. Yeah. So good. Yeah. And so mm. I read this and God reminded me, like Eunice, don't give up. Mm. Keep asking. Keep mm. asking. I want to hear your requests. Mm. I, I, I want to be in a relationship with you. And, and I know this. I know God wants to be in a relationship with me. And I said, God, like, I want to be in a relationship with you, but I just feel this emptiness. I just feel, I don't feel refreshed. And so, you know, another week goes by and, you know, I'm, I'm still praying and I still feel this emptiness. And, and, and once again, I'm like asking God, I'm, I, 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 come back to the conversation that I started with God and I said, God, like, I still feel emptiness. I have this longing and, um, and all of a sudden, um, I'm pouring my heart to God and I hear, uh, wind chimes and nothing supernatural because I do have wind chimes <laughs> in my patio. So <laughs> there's wind chimes outside. Um, but I'm in my room, wind chimes are outside, and I hear the, the, the music sound. I feel God serenading me through the wind chimes. Um, and they're not mm. only in my ear. And I'm not only hearing the wind chimes. I start hearing the wind. Mm. The wind that's moving the wind chimes and making the sound that I'm enjoying. And I feel God saying to me, that's me. You're in my presence. And right there and then I felt pursued. I felt this God reminding me, Eunice, I have been pursuing you and this is how I've been doing it. Um, I've never have, I've, I've never experienced something like that. Um, and I remember I was just a puddle in tears mm. and saying to God, God, I don't want to just be present with you. I want to be in your presence. I don't want to have a relationship with you. I want to be in a relationship with you. Mm. God, I love you but I don't want to just love you. I want to be in love with you. And you see, I feel the word in changes everything. Um, and that whole experience really put the perspective of what in love means. And God didn't put someone a human to feel that in love he gave me the experience of being in love with him first um and i and i received that and i take that with me and i i remember that experience and i and i can take that with me now and be able to to praise God and be able to say, God, I I know what it means to be in love with you. So, yeah. I know a lot of people are going to be encouraged because um, I know they're tired. I know people are tired. So just an encouragement to be persistent in your prayer life. And to keep asking God. I know a lot of moms out there who are just tired. I know a lot of dads out there. I know a lot of dads out there. I was thinking about just my own experience. Mm -hmm. And it's tiring. So stay in the fight. Keep mm -hmm. being persistent. Yeah. Grateful for Eunice and her ministry in our church. Pastor Brittany, what is God teaching you? 
Yeah, honestly, that's that was so beautiful, Eunice. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, I think, um, honestly, in this time of from the start to even now, it has been really hard not to be overcome with um, anxiousness and uh, worry. My my stomach has often been in knots because I'm so stressed out about the state of the world, about loved ones, people I care about, about our youth, and they're in isolation, and all of those things. It's been um, really stressful, Um, and I found myself really um, at the end of myself for for many days, and um, at the start of all of this, but while everything was still new, I didn't really know what what the future was going to bring. I I, I was honestly kind of excited. I thought, oh, a week of kind of like a little bit of change up for a little bit. Cool. This will be cool. <laughs> um, but little did I know um, just how the next two months were going to look insanely different. And it, uh, life was going to be totally flipped upside down. And um, I honestly found myself in perpetually anxious, um, like a real knot in my stomach. And um, And as I... Um, was praying, uh, something I started at the beginning of this year was praying the Lord's Prayer and just praying it morning and night um, to remind myself to pray. To Because oftentimes I, I am like, oh, I'll get it done later. and um, But it helps remind me to pray. And usually I start praying about other things. It like is a, these oh. jump off points. And so um, I've been praying the Lord's Prayer and something that's been sticking out to me every time I pray, it's um, your kingdom come, your will be done. And at the beginning of the year, honestly, I kind of glanced by that part. Yeah, your kingdom come, your will be done. I think I know definitely when I was um, a kid, it was your kingdom come. I was thinking like when Jesus comes back, oh my gosh, uh, I hope I'm married. I hope I'm successful. I hope I've accomplished things. Like, Don't come back too soon. And Um, but, um, so I just, I hadn't, I wasn't really thinking about it, but honestly, as now as an adult looking at the things that are going on in the world and the different stories that I'm hearing more and more and, uh, people having firsthand accounts with certain things, um, I am really grieved by the evil in our world. Um, I would say there's a lot of evil, um, evil in terms of you can literally feel like an evil entity um, that wants to come and like subdue the earth, right? Which we know in scripture, Um, but also evil in the sense of fallen. There's sickness, there's plagues, there's locusts, there's very scary, scary things. And um, so what I typically do when I find myself like that, usually I I go to this particular um, psalm and it's Psalm 46. And um, this is typically, I find myself reading this when I hear about something really horrible happening and I'm just not in control of it. Um, or when earthquakes happen or tsunamis, just freak things that, um, that have significant impacts. Yeah. Um, it says this, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear though the earth gives way though the mountains be moved into the heart of this sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes war seas to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still. And know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. And honestly, as crazy as it sounds, this time of like recognizing just evil and really shaking me out of my comfort zone Mm. 
has forced me to pray that prayer, Lord, your kingdom come, Lord, your will be done. I don't want what the world has to offer. I don't want to rely on what the world has for me. I want your kingdom. I want your ways. I don't want my ways. I don't want the world ways. And I need you. And it's taken me where, okay, I can be this this river, the river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. I can be that. I can dwell in the Lord. And when I dwell in Him, I can be unshaken. These things, mountains falling into the heart of the sea, don't have to shake me. And um, that's been really encouraging to me is I don't have to be shaken to this time. I can come before the Lord. It doesn't mean bad things aren't happening. It doesn't no. it doesn't mean bad things won't happen. Evil is Jesus talks all about it. He says, "Hey, this world is evil, like but take heart." And so um and this is one of my favorite verses um Isaiah 26 um verses 3 through 4 and it's been something that I've just been praying, "God, it seems I need you every single day. I am overcome with anxiety unless I come before you every single day and learn from scripture, learn from past plagues, past um, evil things happening in the earth. Unless I come before you and talk with you, I am shaken. I am not stable. I am I, I am overcome with anxiety. Um, but it says here, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you trusts in the lord for the lord god is an everlasting rock and um i think the lord just continues to remind me of that hey eyes on me eyes on me doesn't matter what what's happening in the world pray yes for my kingdom to come but come to me every day and i i will be in you so that way you can be peaceful so that way you don't have to be shaken and it has really been a night and day difference. Like you can tell the days when I don't get time with the Lord. I'm anxious. I'm overwhelmed. But when I make that time and just commit, I'm, I'm going to reorient my life. I'm a disciple of Jesus. If I'm a disciple of Jesus, my whole life looks different. I'm going to make this time to be in his presence because this world is evil and I need his kingdom come. I need to be in his presence. I need to be dwelling in him if I want to be able to be that secure, uh, non-anxious presence. If I want, If I want to be able to... Um, not be paralyzed by anxiety, but really um, press into what God has for this time. Yeah. yeah. One of the things that I just love, I love to listen to people pray and I love to listen to people just share what the spirit is saying to them. Mm. And um, one of my prayers is that our small groups would be continuing to meet because just because we're, Physically isolated really doesn't mean that we have to be socially isolated. And that is what our hope for a small group is, is that we're sharing and we're, you know, just sharing what God is doing in our lives. It's just so important. I don't know. I'm just listening to Eunice and Brittany and my spirit is buoyed Mm. because I'm feeling encouraged by what God is saying to them. And I'm hearing him say that to me, you know, through them and through their lives. Rick used to be on our staff here at Newport Mesa Church. Now he's Once serving as an time. elder, but now he's like super important. He's, <laughs> he's running, you know, things in the world like the airport. <laughs> um, Rick, what, what is God saying to you during this weird, crazy, unique season? The primary thing God is telling me is how much I hate the term social distancing. <laughs> that, that term just has all kinds of negative mm. connotations wrapped up into it. Right. Yeah. Physically distancing, I get, but socially we need to be even more connected. Yeah, than we absolutely. Ever were before. Um, one of the things that has, has struck me through this whole pandemic experience is I think I only know one person personally who's, who was diagnosed with COVID. Mm. and um, she's since recovered and is doing fine. But what's striking me is the ripple effect of COVID Mm. because there are so many different touch points where people are experiencing all kinds of anxiety and stress, and it kind of ties into what you were saying, Brittany, about um, being still and knowing Mm. that I am God. There are so many people who are are just encaptured by stress and anxiety and fear Mm. in this season. Yeah. And one of the things that 
I'm always trying to be mindful of, and it's been my prayer pretty much every day since this started, is for God to show me those people who just need to be encouraged. Yeah. Um, and to be that non-anxious presence in the midst of the tumult. Um, there's that picture in scripture of the disciples rowing across the lake and the storm starts raging and they get nervous and they get mm. fearful and they get scared. And then you see Jesus kind of <laughs> strolling on the water and he says, hey, chill, the sea's calm and they're in awe and disbelief that this guy could do this. Mm. And, and I think in many ways, our responsibility as believers is to be that that calm in the midst of the storm. Mm. And there's a passage that I really resonate with in uh, Philippians chapter four, verses four through six. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And there are a few things I take away from that passage. Uh, the first thing that strikes me is this idea of being reasonable. Yeah. Um, one of the things that's funny in this season, I was at Home Depot a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> and they've got tape on the ground in front of the store where you're supposed to line up yeah. before you go in the store because they only allow so many people in at a time. And the blue tape is on the ground, and I get in line behind a guy. You know, I've got my mask on, and I'm thinking, how come you guys don't have your mask on yeah. right now? Sorry about that, folks. Um, but the guy in front of him has his mask on, and, and he doesn't move all the way up to his blue space that's six feet ahead. Yeah. And the guy in front of me moves up to his space on the line, and the guy turns around, who's not where he's supposed to be. He goes, get back! Get back! You're going to infect me, and he's oh. he's freaked out. And I'm just going, oh my gosh, has it come to that? And it, it was I'm just laughing, such a, but it's it, crazy. It is, yeah. it is. but yeah. it's such wow. a a poignant picture of the anxiety that some people are yeah. feeling as a yep. result of this. Mm. And one of the things that that I've tried to to emulate, not only that picture of Christ, but just being the person who walks around in the office. I've, I've been fortunate to be able to go to work every day, thank God. Um, and just stand in someone's doorway and ask them how they're doing. Yeah. And you hear the stories of the stress. Mm -hmm. This teaching my kids at home thing is driving me crazy. It's it's putting a wedge between my, my husband and I or my wife and I. Um, we've got all kinds of things with child care and elder care and, and all kinds of different things that people are struggling with. So it's all these ripple effects of COVID that aren't the disease itself, but it's the aftermath of what's been happening. And so we get a unique opportunity um, right now as the church to speak peace and to speak calm into the hearts of people. Um, and it may be a message they've never heard before. So I think we ought to leverage that and take this opportunity to really be the church, to be the people of God, who can be the people that Paul describes in Philippians, who rather than being anxious, we pray. Yeah. Rather than being stressed out, we exude calm mm -hmm. and we give that away as a gift mm -hmm. to the people yeah. that we have influence over. So good. So, so good. I'm listening to Rick and Pastor Brittany and Eunice, and I'm just thinking about the, the lessons that God is teaching them and, um, and how they're gleaning things from the Lord during this unique season that is going to benefit their spiritual lives forever. And really, that's what it looks like to have a relationship with Jesus in season and out of season in good times and bad times is that God can and will, will always teach and lead and guide through all of life's seasons, even unique seasons like this, seasons where we're full of fear and anxiety and things are crazy. It, it's, it's, it's in these seasons where things are being shaken that God teaches us about the things that can't be shaken. Yeah, that's good. And, um, and I have a verse that I just wanted to just to share because I'm hoping that it it reminds someone today 
that even though they feel like this is an unstable environment, it's not sustainable, it, you know, so many things are changing, that God is still in all of this somehow. He's still sovereign and he's still bringing eternal lessons to our hearts. It says in Hebrews chapter 12, um, verse 25, see that you do not refuse him who is speaking. And the author of Hebrews is talking about Jesus. No matter what in this season, don't refuse Jesus or what he's doing mm. in you. There are things that Jesus is saying in which Jesus is doing that, that we have to be tuned into so that we can understand how to get to the other side of this. For if they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, much less will we escape if we reject him who warns from heaven. Again, Jesus is, is trying to reach us, speak to us, warn us. Mm. And at, at that time, his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of things that are shaken. If you have a pen, this would be a great verse to memorize or underline. That is things that have been made in order that the things that cannot be shaken may remain. Now, I'm not convinced that Jesus necessarily created COVID-19, but I am convinced that Jesus will use all circumstances to shake the things out of us right. that don't need to be there. Yep. Things in our marriage, things in our souls, things in the church, things in society, things in business, things in our hearts that are not a part of his kingdom. Verse 28, therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And thus let us offer to God acceptable worship. Acceptable worship, which is what Eunice talked about, with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. Mm. The book of Hebrews is all about um, how Jesus is better, how he's superior than Moses, than the law. And uh, the author goes to a great extent to show just how superior Jesus is. Uh, on Mount Sinai, God gave the law to Moses and he came in a consuming fire. Literally, it was, so, it was so dangerous that animals that got too close had to be put to death. And then there's another mountain later, Mount Moriah in Jerusalem, where Jesus gave his life as a ransom for many. He died on the, on the cross to, to bring forgiveness of sins for all people who would look to him and cry out to him, including the guy literally next to him. Uh, and, and, and literally, he received salvation, the man next to Jesus, who said, Jesus, remember me in, in paradise. And Jesus said, I will. Um, and this kingdom that Jesus introduced is an eternal kingdom. And when things are getting shaky, when we feel like we're anxious and, and it just feels like, man, there's a lot of angst in society right now, you know, and, and, and maybe that person that Rick was referencing, maybe you're literally listening right now. You were, you were at Home Depot a couple days ago and you saw Rick. <laughs> Called out. <laughs> I want you to know that, that even though you're feeling what you're feeling and those feelings are genuine, they're authentic to where you are right now. There's a kingdom that Jesus wants to introduce. He wants to bring to your life that cannot be shaken. It, it can't be taken from you. I grew up with a dad that I loved and um, we would hunt and fish and do all sorts of things together. He gave me a Leatherman. I, I don't know how old I was. I may have been 13. It was, it was very important to me. It was this super Leatherman. If you know the brand Leatherman, you know that they last forever. And uh, eventually he... Uh, got a brain tumor. Eventually he passed away. If you're a part of our church, you've heard my story. You know that that is a part of my, my story from 15 to 24. He suffered through this brain tumor, eventually died. Um, later, in, later in life, after he had passed away, that Leatherman was very important to me. So fast forward, along comes Tara. So Tara comes into my life. We're dating. We're excited. Uh, we decide to borrow my parents' canoe. And after a pretty big rainstorm, we go canoeing and we decide to have a picnic. I bring my fishing gear and we get into this canoe and the river looks really calm. It looks like a great opportunity for us to have just a, you know, just an afternoon together. And so we set out on this canoe and about a half mile down from where we put in, I realized that there was, that the river was way high, that there was a bridge that this dilapidated bridge that the river was actually flowing over. And I'm thinking, it doesn't feel like we're going that fast, but this doesn't seem like a safe situation. So 
I started to paddle towards the shore and it started to speed up and I, and, and we went underneath this bridge and I said, Tara, I, li I think you're going to need to like grab onto this bridge, this overhanging, this branch that was coming over the river. So she did. So she's literally hanging from this, this tree branch and, and literally within five seconds, the canoe had like slammed into the bridge wow. and, um, and it flipped and I went in and luckily I grabbed onto the, to the cement part of the bridge and I, I pulled myself up, but the, but the canoe was like facing upwards and now all this ridge river was just surging and it was sucking the canoe underneath the bridge. And I was just trying to, first of all, save myself, but also try to like pull this canoe up and there was just no way it was going to happen. So within a, a couple minutes, that canoe had literally been sucked underneath the bridge and I'm standing on top of the bridge. I don't know with the, with the water coming over. And I realized that we had lost everything that was in the canoe. So I, I walked across the bridge. We got to Terra. We walked all the way through the poison ivy about a half mile back without our shoes because we took our shoes off. And, um, and we kind of took stock of what we had lost. And I realized that I had lost um, the, the Leatherman. And, and I just was overcome with this feeling of like, I'm never going to be able to replace that, that knife, that Leatherman. And you know what? I, I moved forward. I moved on. Fast forward. Tara and I got married. And, um, she bought me a gift for the wedding night and she bought me a Leatherman and, um, on the Leatherman, it says in memory of Jim Hansen. And this is a really valuable knife to me, not just because, uh, my wife bought it for me, but because it represents a knife that I lost. But as much as I love this knife, as much as I value this knife, it's important to me. It's just a thing. It's a thing that I will not take with me to heaven. It will not be a part of my eternal experience with God. And this is what I feel like God has been speaking to me about, is that there are things that may need to be shaken out of my life because they may not even be bad. They may not even be bad, but they're weights that are holding me back from following him. There are things that I have grown too fond of and in some ways may may have made an idol out of and i feel like god has been speaking to me personally about uh, about being more committed to the kingdom that jesus talks about here in romans 12 the kingdom that cannot be shaken and friends i know that god is speaking to you about things this thursday may 21st i want you to really think about that question what is god teaching you what is the thing that God is teaching you, explaining to you, cultivating in you, developing in you. That is something that is going to be an eternal thing that can never be taken from you. The kingdom that he's depositing in you. That's really what May 21st is all about. Thursday, 7 p.m. We're going to have this discussion and we're going to invite you to come to our digital platform and to share what God has been teaching you in a three to five minute segment, a story, a verse, what is it that you can encourage someone else with? I wanted to just thank Eunice, thank Brittany, and thank Rick, because you guys have really opened up the door to, to give each of us models for what, what it is that we're looking for on Thursday. I want you to think about that question. Think about what you've heard today. Think about the unshakable things that God is placing in your life that can never be taken from you, the kingdom things, the Jesus things that God is teaching you during this time. And if you've never given your heart to Jesus, if you don't know what it feels like to be a part of an unshakable kingdom, I want to lead you in a simple prayer right now. I know a lot of people are searching. In fact, on Google, prayer is one of the number one searched items right now. Prayer. Can you imagine that? And I want to lead you in a simple prayer uh, that I believe God will use to start something significant in your heart, to start something eternal in your heart. If you would pray with me right now, the simple prayer, Jesus, we give you our lives. We give you our lives during the middle of this COVID-19 pandemic. We give you our lives. We receive the forgiveness that Jesus wants to give to us freely as a free gift, the free gift of salvation. We receive this free gift. Father, I pray that you would bring the stability that Brittany talked about. We pray that you would bring the the non-anxious presence that Rick talked about. 
We pray that you would bring your presence, like Mm -hmm. Eunice talked about, these unshakable aspects of your kingdom. Mm -hmm. Bring those into our lives. Jesus, bring your presence into our life. We need to be unshakable because we feel very vulnerable right now. Mm -hmm. And so we commit ourselves to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to go ahead and post five questions at the uh, at, uh, in the comment section of whatever platform you're listening to. We hope that you'll use those questions to really think more about what we've talked about today. And uh, our hope is that you will continue to grow in your relationship with Jesus. God bless you. thank you for joining us today. Here at New Prayer Mesa Church, we're all about changed lives. If this message encouraged you, we'd love to hear about your story. Connect with us on our webpage or email us at info at newportmesa.org. If you'd like to support the ministry here, you can give through our website or our mobile app. Thanks again for tuning in, and we hope to see you next week.